A note before we begin. As we are always working to make CodeReader better, our website and app may look different than what is shown in this demo. When you first sign into the web application, you'll see the services page. There, you can create and edit workflows that your authorized app users will use for scanning with the mobile app. We've pre-populated your account with two demo options to give you a good example of what a service will look like for your intended use. Clicking the name of your service enables you to edit the existing service configuration. In this service, we've designated its type as Record Only. This means that there's no database being compared against. This service just makes a log of collected data. You can also see on this page that the service is On Device. This means your users will be able to scan even if there is no internet connection. On the Users section of All Services, you'll see a list of all app users that you've created credentials for. You can select an app user and add or remove them from access to this service, as well as create new app users from this page. Users can also be created from the Users section of the website. Clicking Add User brings you to a form for creating a username and password that you provide to your app user. You can add and remove the service access from this section as well. It's important to note that there are three different roles available for user accounts. When you sign up for CodeReader, you'll become the primary administrator, known as a master admin. You can create more than one master admin, who will then be able to access your account. Data admins have all the permissions of a master admin, except for access to billing information. The difference between an admin and a user is that users are not able to log into the website. Users can only log into the mobile application, and are subject to any restrictions applied by the admin in the settings. We generally recommend that you create a user account for anyone that will be scanning with your devices. By creating different users, you can filter the history by who has scanned each item. You may create as many mobile app users as you'd like. Our different billing plans can be accessed directly from the Change Plan link, as well as the account settings. You can change your plan at any time, upgrading or downgrading monthly if needed. Every paid plan has unlimited scans available. Our pricing model is based on the number of unique devices that sign into the mobile app during a monthly period. For example, we count a device as billable if your authorized app user signs in during your monthly billing period. The monthly count is not based on your currently used devices. Instead, it's the total number of unique devices logged into an account within a month. You can have thousands of devices scanning tickets at the same time anywhere in the world. Each location should have a unique app username or include a session answer indicating the scanning location. The resulting scan records can then be viewed, filtered, shared, and exported. At the beginning of each month, this count resets, so you're not charged for a device again unless it logs in during that month. To view a list of all active monthly devices, you can click on the Devices link in the account settings. By default, the number of devices your app users can log into is based on your plan limits. You can disable this option in the account settings by allowing overages. Overages are billed by device with the price reflecting your current plan's cost per device. You do not need any special hardware to scan barcodes. CodeReader is compatible with iOS and Android phones and tablets. The app will also work with dedicated scanning devices from companies like Zebra or Honeywell. However, we do not sell any of their hardware. It is up to you to decide which devices you will use CodeReader with. One consideration to make when setting up CodeReader is what the scanning environment will be like. You may want to use our advanced scan engine, SD Pro. This add-on can be purchased from the plans page as well. It costs an additional $5 per device in low volumes, and is significantly discounted with higher volume plans. When using CodeReader for attendance tracking, Admins often ask how they can have their users add notes, take photos, or answer questions about the guest. In the questions section of the site, you can create and edit the prompts presented to your app users. Clicking on Add a Question will take you to the Question Builder, where you can select from multiple options to collect data. Just as with users, questions can be created, 
either from the questions section of the site or directly in the service builder. We'll go back to our record service and click on the questions step. From here, we can click add a question. We'll see the same available options from the questions section of the website. Once we've created our question, it will appear on the available questions list. Dragging and dropping the desired question onto the question tree will add it to your service. You'll see we have a few different options as to when the prompt will be displayed to your app user. One option is to present the question once when the service is opened, with the user able to go back and update their answer as needed throughout their scanning process. These are referred to as session questions or batch questions. You can have a question asked after presenting the response from the scan. You can also have specific questions asked based on if a scan is valid or invalid. Moving forward, we see some advanced service options. You might not need to change any settings on your service, but if you want to do something like scan using NFC or have the camera reopen automatically, this is where you will find those options. Additionally, you can find our popular kiosk mode feature on this page. In this mode, you can set your iOS and Android tablets or phones to be locked to the code reader app and be set to use the front camera so attendees can scan their own ID. A common advanced setting for attendance tracking is conditional validation. This setting allows customization of attendance tracking use cases that have a variable such as time or day. With this feature, you can add a special count and or duration-based condition to invalidate scans. Sometimes admins want to change the look of the app as well. We enable customization of the scan response screen, including both the colors and the labels. Additionally, you can add your own logo to the mobile app scanning screen. You do this by selecting Branding in Account Settings. It's free to add your own logo. If you'd like to change more of the app's design, we offer a paid, full white label option. Let's go to the Database section now. Here you can create and edit databases, either doing so manually or by importing a file. Right now, we only have one database with 10 values. Clicking on the database's name will bring you to a list of all the barcode values in it. Each row contains the barcode value at the top and the response text underneath it. The response text is any additional data that might be attached to a value. What that typically includes will depend on your individual needs, but most often with attendance tracking, the response text is the name and other details about the identification, the invitation, or the ticket holder. However, the response field can be left blank entirely if desired. Both the value and the response are displayed to the app user during the scan. A common question from admins is if their users will need to physically scan a barcode to check in guests. There's an in-app lookup option similar to a search box online. Here in the app, clicking on the value will take the user to a screen to submit the barcode value as if they had scanned it with the device's camera. This feature is turned on by default, but can be disabled in the service settings. It is important to note that the response field also supports HTML. This format is how you could optionally include images or web pages within the app's response. On screen, your users will be able to visit and interact with a linked website without leaving the app itself. To edit the response text, simply click Edit to the right of the value. You can also generate an individual QR code for that value by clicking Barcode. This can be useful for testing purposes. If you'd like to create QR codes for all of your database values, you'll need to go to the Export tab. There, you'll see two options. CSV Export will give you a spreadsheet copy of your current database. To export QR codes, you'll want to click Barcode Export. Doing so will take you to a customization page where you can change the image size, the text, and add a logo. Once you've customized your template, click Create Task and the image generation will happen in the background. The template you've created will also be saved in case you want to export more images later. When your task is completed, you'll see a notification in the task inbox at the top right corner of the page. You may click the download button to save the zip file of images directly, or you can click Go to My History at the bottom of the inbox. This link will take you to the Tasks page, which can also be accessed from the top navigation bar.
Here, you'll see a history of all tasks processed on the account. You can filter and search through these as well as select the completed or error tabs to view specific tasks. You'll also see a few more tabs related to scheduling. When a new task is created, either from elsewhere on the site or by clicking add a task, it will move to the queue until it is being processed and then finally completed. My schedule refers to periodic tasks that you have set up. Let's see task options to get a better idea of what you can schedule with CodeReader. On the task creation page, you'll see a list of options indicating everything that can be done automatically. It's important to note that not all of these tasks can be scheduled to repeat periodically. Nearly all of these tasks can be accessed from another page on the site, but one that is exclusive to the tasks page is export scans. For a scheduled task, you'll first need to select a time interval for the repeated action to occur. This period of time can be anything from minutes to monthly. Under medium details, you'll see the options for where your scan exports can be sent. This can be a server, a Dropbox account, or an email address. After configuring what the email and attached file should look like, you will also may want to ensure that the scans sent only include what you specifically need. On the right hand side are the filter options. Changing these settings from the defaults will allow you to include or exclude anything from invalid scans to scans made by certain users, or even, using the advanced search options, scans that contain a specific word in their response text. If you're using many filters frequently, it would be tedious to reselect each one every time you need to view filtered scans. This is why we've created Export Templates. In the drop-down, you can select Create New Template. This will take you to a separate page for building a template that will be applied to any spreadsheet you want to export. Like our filter section, our Export Template Builder has many different values you can choose to add to your template. These include properties of the scan record, such as the GPS location that was collected, as well as choices like username and timestamp. Question answers are also available to add to your template. With all of these options, simply drag and drop into the template. The names of these sections will appear as an individual column with a heading in your spreadsheet. They can also be customized by clicking Edit. To access the export template without needing to create a task, you can go to the Scans page. This is where all of your scan records will be found. On the left hand side are the same filter options we've seen before, along with the export options. Your CSV file can be downloaded directly from the website or emailed to you as an attachment. Additionally, we provide an option to create an online portal that contains the spreadsheet so that you can share data with others on your account. This link can also be used to automatically export data to Google Sheets or Excel. Back at the top, on the right, is where you can access export templates. Here you will see all of your created export templates available for editing, along with the option to add a template. Next to the export templates tab is an option for bulk scan removal. You are again given the filter options and can then remove all scans which match your filters. To the left of the bulk scan removal page, you can find all of your scan uploads from the app. When your service is on device, all scans remain on that device until the app is connected to the internet. Your app users can manually tap to upload their on-device scans, or you can turn on AutoSync, which will do this action automatically in the background. Regardless, all of these uploads are sent to the scans page as normal scan records, but a history of which scans, when, and from which user were uploaded is found here. Clicking on Search Scans takes us back to the main section of the scans page. Here, there are some other tabs to view specific data. Moving from the default list view to map view will display a map with pins placed at the GPS coordinates of each scan. GPS location is only recorded when the setting has been activated in the services settings. Next to map view, we have a photo grid which presents images taken as question answers. These images are not stored on CodeReader. Photos taken from the app will be sent to your designated Dropbox, Amazon S3, or FTP service address. When sharing is turned on in these storage locations, the photos will then appear on this tab. Finally, under Scan Statistics, we have a breakdown of scans per user and amount of valid or invalid scans within the filter range.
we'll wrap our tour up by heading back to the services page. While we've only looked at one record service, there are actually quite a few other options for barcode verification and collecting. Creating a new service will first take you to a page that lists all of our available service types. Record scans and validate scans with a database are the only services that will work offline. When validating with a database, admins will often enable the duplicate checking option when on the first page of the service builder. This is so your users won't accidentally scan an ID or ticket more than once. The app will alert the app user that a barcode has already been scanned. This setting includes a reset period, for example, you could reset weekly if you're controlling access at a weekly meeting. These are among the many advanced options we offer for customizing the platform to your needs.